let's start our semester of this course with three important questions first one which is what second what which is why third one which is how so let's start with the first important question at this course number one what is the aim of this course first of all let's take this example you have to integrate from 0 to 1 for the function x power x dx after taking all integration techniques you cannot solve this integral this integral can be solved like before so in this case this is the aim of this course so here we have to set all advice and approximate technique for each calculus operations like before integration you already discussed before but the above integral you cannot evaluate it so this integral for example from 0 to 1 for x bar x dx cannot be solved exactly so you have to solve it solve it numerically numerically which is an approximate solution so it is numerically or approximately now we answered the first question of this course the second question which is how, why can I do this why why we use this course at this semester in the following cases you have to apply this course in the following cases first case if the exact solution is not available like exactly the, the integration at the beginning of the tutorial second reason why we use this course using a uniform approach instead of not solving a problem you can solve it numerically in order to get the solution but approximately not exact the third important question is, is which is how can I use this course in order to solve the old problems that I can't solve them before here we will discuss many approximation techniques for example for the integration we will discuss five or six techniques you have to select which one you can use according to two factors you will select the technique that gives you the smallest L which guarantees the second reason to get the highest accuracy and now let's talk in deep about our topic of today which is root finding first of all what is meant by the word root 
root for sure means solution of an equation or it can be defined as the intersection with the x-axis intersection with the x-axis for example if you have in the xy plane a graph like this one this intersection which we can call it alpha this alpha is denoted by root or solution of an equation or the intersection with the x-axis and for sure if you need to find the root for an equation it must be written in the zero form so should be written like this f of x equals to zero in order to be able to find the x which means it is the root of this equation the next important point is why do we need to uh, use these techniques in order to evaluate the root for example for sure you can solve this equation x squared minus x minus 2 equals 0 you can easily solve this but what will be the case if you are required to solve this equation x tan inverse x plus e power negative x plus shine x equal to zero for sure this equation can be solved exactly or using the old techniques so you have to evaluate the root or you have to solve this equation using any numerical technique so now let's make the plan for the chapter so here the plan of the chapter we have two major or two subdivisions of the chapter first division is two points methods which means in order to be able these methods you have to have at the beginning two initial conditions and the second part which is one point methods For example, one of the techniques of the two-point method we have, which are the bisection method, second one which is regular falsi, which is which is can be denoted as false position method. second one or the third one which is the secant method which for sure depends on using the secant line and one point methods we have two methods first one which is Newton's method second one which is fixed point method and some books call this method add the, as the iteration method and in this video we will be concerned with the bisection method and the Newton's method and for sure you have to differentiate between the two points method and the one point method here in this section you have initially two points to start the iteration techniques and here you have to have only one point to start your iteration in all in all these methods you have to know how to use them algebraically and graphically which means you have to know how can I solve this equation using all these methods and how can I represent the solution of the equation graphically let's start our first method which is bisection method let me explain you how to represent the solution graphically for example if you have function f of x like this and for sure you know that this is the root which is alpha for example and this function is continuous 
on interval A and B. And under condition, here is this f of A, and here we have the corresponding value of U, which is f of B. As you know here, or as you see here, that f of A is a negative value, and f of B is a positive value. So the main condition, which is the mean value theorem, mean value theorem, if you have f of x is a continuous function, on the interval a and b and you have that the multiplication of f of a times f of b which is less than zero the theorem states that for sure zero exists at least one root belongs to the interval A and B. And now, how can I use the bisection method to find this root or to make the iteration in order to find this root? As you know here, graphically, we have the interval from A to B. Bisection means by means two and section means parts. So you have to divide the interval AB into two parts. For example, you will find the point here which is C, and you have to find here the corresponding value which is F of C1, for example. And for sure, you can evaluate this value C as C1 equals to A plus B over 2. And now, the whole interval which is AB divided into two intervals, A, C1, and C1, B. For sure, you can Imagine that the, uh, the exact root alpha exists in the interval A and C1. But you have to check the condition of existence of a root, which is you have to multiply f of A multiplied by f of C1. Here we can write this. So f of A multiplied by f of C1, which will give you a value negative, which is less than zero. So alpha for sure belongs to the interval which is a c1 and now we limit the interval or the whole interval from a to b to a smaller interval which is a c1 and now i have again once again to divide the small interval which is a c1 with another value here for example c2 so i divided the smaller interval which is a c1 to a c2 and c2 c1 and if you find the value or the corresponding value of c2 which is f of c2 you will for sure find that so here it is clear that the root exists between c2 and c1 and now i divide this interval again with c3 here for example and find the corresponding value which is f of c3 and as you see here the whole interval or the big interval a b i divided it into small 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 interval in order to one of the cuts will be c1 c3 and c4 and c so, so on to evaluate this alpha merely and the rule which is c the midpoint of this interval c equals to upper plus lower limits over 2 and this is the rule which will be used in the next example and now let's start this example use the bisection method to find the solution accurate to three decimal numbers for f of x equal x minus 2 power negative x equal 0 starting with x node equal 0.6 and x1 equal 0.7 here this x node we call it before A, and this X1 we call it B. So now, first of all, to check that there is a root in this interval, you have to find that F of A, which is F of 0.6, which will equal to 0.6 minus 
2 power negative 0.6 equals to negative 0.0598. And second value, which is f of b equals to f of 0.7. You have to replace each x with 0.7. So it will be 0.7 minus 2 power negative 0.7 will be equals to 0.0844 and using the mean value theorem which states that since that f of a multiplied by f of b which is a negative so this means there is a root or a solution belongs to the interval of 0.6 and 0.7 in order to summarize the results, we will make the following table. In this table, we have to write first A, which is 0.6, and B, which is 0.7. And the first important thing to write here is that F of A, which is negative here, and F of B, which is here, positive. So first thing to find that to find A plus B over 2. So 0 0.6 plus oven over 2, which will be 0 0.65. And now you have to find f of c. So replace each x in this equation with 0 0.65, like this. So 0 0.65 minus 2 power negative 0 0.65, which will give us 0 0.0127. And as you see here, the value of f of c positive. So you have to replace here this 0.7 with the new value, which is 0.65, since f of c is positive. And this 0.6 remains the same. So 0.6 plus 0.65 over 2 will be 0.625. And now you have to find f of this new value, which will give us the value of negative 0.023. And for sure, since the f of c is negative, I should replace this a. So I will cross out this 0.6 and replace it with the new c, which is 0.625. And now 0.65 remains the same. And now I have to find the midpoint of this interval, which is 0.625 plus 0.65 over 2, which will give me 0.6375. And now I have to evaluate the corresponding value of function to be negative. 5.3 times 10 power negative 3, which is also negative. So I have once again to cross out this as I stressed on that this column to have the f of x, which is a negative value. So this interval will be smaller and smaller. So it will be 0.6375. And this point remains the same. And second one to evaluate the midpoint of this one to be to be 0 0.64375 and evaluate this value and I will continue till reach three decimal places fixed in certain two executive steps or consecutive steps so it will be for example 0.64212 and the next one will be 0.64237 and as you see here we have three decimal digits are fixed in the two consecutive steps so in this example the root will be approximately equals to 0.642 and this root evaluated up to the accuracy of 10 power negative 3.
So, as a summary for this problem, we started with large interval for 0.7 to 0.6, and then for 0.6, 0.65, I reduced the length of this interval, and so on, till we reach a constant digits in two consecutive steps. And now, let's go to the second part of this video, which is the second categories of techniques, which is one-point methods. Let's start with Newton's method. As previous, let's start by explaining how can I evaluate this root graphically first. Then I will show you how can I evaluate this root algebraically. For example, if you have this function, which is this f of x, And for sure you know that here this is the exact root alpha. And for example, you have an initial condition, only one, which is here, x naught, for example. And you will find its corresponding value here, which is f of x naught. And in this point, you have to find the tangent line to this curve at this point, which will be this one. So here... This intersection, we can call it x1, which is the second iteration, and I have also to find its corresponding value on this function here, f of x1, and then also find the tangent, which will be like this, which will intersect also here with another point, which is x2, and so on. And as you see, Newton's method is convert, convergent to the root rapidly rather than the bisection method and the iteration formula which will be xn plus 1 equals to xn minus f of xn over f dash of xn and this is the iteration formula of this method and as you see and it's clear for you Newton method depends on the tangents at certain points and for sure it is rapid conversion to the root or to the exact root and now let's solve the same problem that we solved it before but now using the Newton method in order to show you how Newton method is convergent directly or rapidly to the exact root here first of all I have the interval which is x belongs to 0.6 and 0.7 for example I can select initial point here which is only one which is x node to be for example 0.6 for example and here I have f of x equals to x minus 2 power negative x from the formula I have to find first f dash of x which will be the differentiation of this function with respect to the independent variable x so it will be 1 minus the same function multiplied by derivative of the power, multiplied by ln of the base. So f dash of x equals to 1 plus 2 power negative x ln 2. And since the iteration, the iteration formula, which is xn plus 1 equals to xn minus f of xn over f dash of xn, I have to substitute in this formula. So it will be directly xn minus f of xn. I have to replace each x by xn in the given equation. So it will be xn minus 2 power negative xn. And now f dash, which will be 1 plus 2 power negative xn ln 2. So at first, I have to start with at x node equals 0.6. So I have to find now x1. And I will replace each x by 0.6, so it will be 0.6 minus 0.6 minus 2 power negative 0.6 over 1 plus 2 power negative 0.6 ln 2. And this value will be 0.641. And now I have to use this new one, which is x1, which is equal to 0.641 in order to find evaluate and evaluate x2 which will be directly 0.6411 directly from the second step as you see here we got our target here which is 
three decimal digits are fixed in two consecutive steps. So here directly the root of this equation will be approximately equal 0.641. This evaluated up to 10 power negative three. And now I showed you that the Newton method is exactly and rapidly to the exact root rather than the bisection method.